Welcome back to Station Ears. It's time to go digging, or at least it has been for me. Down here, we'll find some new stairs off into the uh, the rock of the uh, moon we're stuck on. And here we're going to have a junction, I think. We're going to have one passageway straight ahead, one to the right, one to the left. Maybe put hydroponics that way. But over here, I've moved a couple of things. This is from my top floor outside. And I popped in a couple of stacker, not stackers, uh, sorters in here temporarily. Not sure if those are the final positions yet, but you know, I'll come back to those in a, a couple of minutes. But first of all, that we have, and you can see the shadow effect, it's because I'm holding this lamp in my, in my backpack. So we've got a chute coming down. That's not connected to the chute that's in our main area up here. It's actually out on a gantry, and we'll go out there just in a second, just so we can see where everything is hooked up. That's still disconnected. It's going to be for my alloy storage area. So if I want to make alloys, I can just dump it into that bin at the top, and it'll just drop down here. However, and oh, that's a good point to actually do a quick test. Let's just grab some copper, for instance. I should make sure this other chute is going to work fine. Let's cycle to the exterior. And we will depressurize again at the moment, just while I'm working with the doors open. There we go. All right, so up here we have our bin for one system, but I've also put another bin for the other system, so I may, we may as well check to see whether that is all connected. Hopefully it is. It goes down here and runs this way, and all the way over here. Let's keep going. <laughs> keep going and then this is the corner of that room so that's how far we are roughly from the base but this is about five six blocks down so yeah just bear that in mind i just want to make sure that if i get to a crater like this that i'm not going to accidentally hit that room or any of the other rooms there's nothing much out here until you get over that way quite a deal and since there's nothing that way either then we should be safe in the other corridors just want to, don't want to dig up into vacuum accidentally and um, ruin the base one day. Okay, so um, now we need to discuss what we're going to do. So we're going to get ores down there, and I think I want something that automates smelting them into ingots, and then from ingots we want to send it somewhere else. I'll I'll take just sending it into some <laughs> into some shoots for now. Uh, so let me just grab. Some shoots. I'm going to need more than that, but it'll do for now. Now, I did put a message in one of the... I think one of the videos I put a comment in, but just in case I didn't, I got a comment that basically said and told me that if you don't configure the sorters, they act as a, uh, a splitter. So a round robin. First, it will go to one destination. Oh, and there's a ball of copper. Cool, everything is working. First it'll go to one destination, then it'll go to the other one if you don't configure them. That seems actually pretty appropriate, because if we use the arc furnace, number one, it's going to, yes, it's going to emit some atmosphere in here. Doesn't much matter though, because for the moment it's in vacuum, but even if it wasn't, I, I'll probably have put some doors here, and it's not going to interfere with the atmosphere, or an airlock even, it's not going to interfere with the atmosphere in the rest of the base. And that will do just fine. Or I could even open this up to vacuum. It doesn't have to be an atmosphere. So if we have this maybe connected to here, and then we have another one, uh, shoot connecting these two, and then another one from here down, we can have two arc furnaces. And that would automatically split between the two, except for the fact there's this third output. So may have to deal with that somehow. Maybe it has to be a loop. Hmm. Let's try it with it with a loop kind of system. So what do we actually want to do here? <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to cough. Okay, now I've had a coughing fit. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not getting ill after Christmas. Um, we can build our output here. So if I put in an inlet, do I want an inlet from a machine or will this do its job just fine? Interesting. Let's actually just try it with a windowed chute, just because that's probably cool enough to see things going through. And we'll just put another one in, hopefully there. Yep. And let's get the rest out. We're going to need a corner. 
this and then straight so it goes down and then another corner once it gets down to the bottom and then one more corner into the input there we go so if that divides equally between the two one's going to go this way the other one's going to go down and then from this side we're going to do probably the same thing to a second arc furnace so i may as well go and get that set up um assuming that i don't actually need one for something else uh, maybe i made a better make another one but we can put the the um the shoots in right now because it doesn't really matter all that much uh, oh i'm out of shoots so i'm going to manufacture some of those at least that means i know where i need to put the second arc furnace okay hopefully everything is straightforward and then what we're going to need to do is probably if we want this to be automatic i may have to just um let me just set this okay so we may have to put a data network here and interrogate these furnaces now they didn't used to have the activate sort of um now it's going to be coming out that way so let's just grab the cutters they didn't used to have the ability to activate the furnaces remotely but i think they now have that so that should be pretty good if we should be able to use that let's just put a junction in you get the idea uh also on the back what we're going to need to connect as well is the power so the same thing here and you know just straight in between them All right, so now I'm going to need to go and get that other arc furnace and then maybe a few more bits and pieces. OK, so I've got a few bits and pieces. Well, I've got a stationary battery and remembering to leave room for the on off button this time. I'm going to pop it here and we'll get a transformer built or use the upstairs one. Let's turn the battery on. And over here, probably where is my that's the arc furnace. No, I want the other thing. Yeah, I've removed the generator from upstairs. It's a solid fuel generator. Uh, what we can probably do is have a filter later that actually deals with this on a sort of permanent basis that just filters any coal into this kind of area. However, you know, I don't need to worry about it just yet. So let's just uh, make sure power is going to go that way, shall we? OK, and then I can run a cable. Let's just uh, grab some of you. And turn you around. Come back this way. The one thing that the solid generators are really good for is they produce quite a lot of power. So we definitely don't want to just use them up with use that power up or that coal up without actually storing it. Because down here it isn't connected to the rest of the base. So we may as well have something around out here. Uh, I'm going to need a transformer, aren't I? Um, I don't need the data from that, I guess. For now, did I bring a transformer down? No, I don't think I did. Let's go and grab one. I think I have one in the main area. If not, there's one upstairs. Definitely always want to have a transformer after your batteries, just because we don't want the slight inconvenience of all our wires blowing up. Have we got a transformer? Yes, we've got a transformer. Good. And down we go. OK, and we're probably going to see if we can try and read something with electronics. Now, I haven't looked at this myself just yet, so <laughs> I will also be looking at this for the first time, uh, which I, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll probably want an APC as well, um, just to, eh, yeah, let's just set that up to 500 and then hook up that to this. Let's just grab this cable instead. Just go straight cable that way. Of course, we're going to need to go up to reach the uh, the sorters as well. They're going to need power, but uh, not well, hopefully not that much of it. Uh, where do we need power to? Uh, that is power. Data would be on the other side, but I don't think we need data unless we configure these things. So for now, let's just grab the power and bring that down to straight, hopefully. Once I can click on the right area, there we go. 
And we're going to need another run, aren't we? So that's okay. Let me finish up with the power and bring you back then. Okay, so it's time for more electrics, or at least electronics. Um, I've put in a test bin here. This should feed into this same system. And it has a junction above it, so anything that goes into this chute system will still get distributed this way. And we've got the sorters all hooked up, and they go down into the two arc furnaces. Okay, no need for any special, well, at least not that I've found, no need for any special unit at the bottom, like the export and import types of chute. Oh, and do remember to hook these up with a full-size cable. I uh, may have burnt a small cable out, because this can actually output a fairly decent amount of energy. And, of course, we've got a battery in here with a transformer. And again, make sure this transformer is set to be able to provide enough power for however many furnaces you have. In this case, I've got two arc furnaces, but I'm also going to have a bunch of electronics as well. So if you don't do that, this is not going to be enough. Uh, these, these furnaces won't work correctly. And of course, we do want them to work correctly. So we're going to have some electronics. Um, let's just pick all of you up. OK, so we're going to need to read in something from each of these. So first of all, let's put in a couple of uh, not batch writers, logic readers. Let's just flip them around like this and like this. Grab the screwdriver. And I've renamed this one arc one and arc two. All right, so let's just say we want to read arc one and in this one we want to read arc two there we go and what do we want to read well we want to read the import slot occupant same thing here import slot occupant right now they're both reading zero but they're off anyway so no need to worry about that one uh we're also then going to want to grab a processor just one and we're going to want min-max in this particular instance. There we go. We haven't used min-max before. It's a new unit. So what we need to select is two inputs. And we've got two here. So we can just switch to that. And let's say, oh, they're just not labeled yet. So let's actually relabel them. So um, you were going for the arc one, aren't you? So arc reader one and arc reader two. Not that I've been testing at all, and I already had those those things in the slots. So yeah, Art Reader 1, Art Reader 2, Min Max. So we can just select Art Reader 1, Art Reader 2, and select Less. Okay, so when either of those are 1, if I get this correctly, and when either of those are 1, this will be 1. Hopefully it makes sense. Lastly, I'm going to want a Batch Writer. Let's just get this in place, Batch Writer. Rotate, need all the ports powered. And now this one, we want to select the input as, uh, sorry, the input as the logic min max unit. And the output's going to be this, the arc furnaces, all of them, because it's a batch writer. And it's going to say activate. All right, so what's going to happen here is if either of the input slots is, you know, um, not active, what's the right word? Uh, full of something, then it's going to send it, and because this sort of system will send stacks at a time, and that stack could be one, it could be 50, doesn't really matter to it, it just sorts in stacks, it will send down here and send them into each of these. So these will pick them up. This one will say, hey, is any of them actually full? Get ready to, get ready to go. And this one will then say, hey, if you're ready to actually go, activate all furnaces. And of course, they'll all come on, and then if anything's in any of them, then it'll go. Now, what we may have to do depends how these work. If only one is actually connected. If one is only actually connected and in fact, let's actually test that out, shall we? So um, I may need some. Oh, no, they're off at the moment. That's OK, because we want to test what the behavior is. If I need to build some kind of loop into this. So let's just split one, split another one and split a third one. All right, so let's grab one and put you in the chute. Let me also just turn on the readers just so we can see what's going on. Oh, wait a second. It fell out. So, yeah, it is obviously 
doing that. So what we need to do is have some kind of continual loop going in, I think. So I can replace that with a junction, maybe have the output of this one go around and it will continue to try and search for an output. So uh, do I have any? I uh, probably don't have enough. Yeah, but if we have something like. Mm, if I block this off, will that actually solve the problem? Hmm. That is, that's an interesting option. Are you going to let me block you off? I wonder. If I, uh, yeah, it won't let me put an inlet on it. It won't let me put an outlet on it. Well, I suppose I could put an outlet on it, but, uh, hmm. Junction. No, I don't want a junction. Oh, no, I don't want a junction. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to block this off with anything. So if that goes around, we're going to have to do two corners with a straight piece between them, something along those sort of lines and a corner again. And then, you know, return back this way. But of course, I'm going to need to get more pieces for that, and then we're going to have to have a jun another junction there. One input, two outputs. I'm not sure if you can do that in one corner block. I think you have to do it a little bit differently. Hmm, let me let me go and look. OK, so one loop later, <laughs> if it can't get into the system, it's going to go around into this junction again, which it should only be able to come back round again. And hopefully I will never need any more capacity than these chutes, assuming that they can accumulate in the chutes, which I don't quite know. Or at least let's give it a try. Let's see what the readers are saying. The zero and zero. OK, so I put one in and in you go. And do you go into a reader? Yep, that's arc reader one. So it's gone into arc one. Turn off my jetpacks. And number two. You got into Art Reader 2? Yep, there we go. <laughs> this is where the game explodes. <laughs> what happens if we put another one in and pull a handle? Does it come out again? Or is it stuck? Both of these are still reading one. That's a good sign. If everything works, what will they be able to do is then this one is reading Art Reader 1, Art Reader 2, less than, turn that on. All right, and this one is then going to read Logic Moon Max, Arc Furnace, and then hit the Activate button. So, will you activate? You will. Will you output? You will. All right. Now the other one should have found an input slot. <laughs> and this is where the problem may occur. Uh, yeah, it has found an input slot, but it's not actually re-triggering. This is just saying one, but this is not actually redoing the calculation. Maybe it needs to be turned on and off or something along those lines. So what happens if I turn you on and off? Will you re-trigger? Will any of you actually re-trigger? Mm, this is going to be a problem. And I'm probably going to be solving this one. I'm probably going to be able to have to look up oh, any some way of doing that. What I may have to do is some, devise some kind of reset switch, which is uh, <laughs> more tests, <laughs> which is where you guys come in. So feel free to comment if you can think of a way around this. We do now have arc reader and arc reader, arc reader one, two. One is correctly saying one. The math is still saying one, and this should still be uh, outputting activate. Unfortunately, it looks like activate doesn't seem to want to be able to be re-triggered. Can you turn yourself off? No, nope, it's still on. OK. So if I switch you to activate again. Yeah, that's actually going to work, but only works once. Hmm. OK, don't panic. <laughs> I know, I know it looks horrible, but let's let's just go through it. OK. First thing, uh, we're going to go through these four blocks. We've got memory. Let's go flipping between one and minus one. This one is just set to minus one. So set that to minus one, put a math unit in. We're going to take logic memory from the right. 
logic memory from the left, and we're going to multiply. OK, so if this is minus one and this is one, that's its initial state. When we set it up, you set this to one minus one. It multiplies them. Logic writer writes minus one minus one times minus one is one <laughs> writes there. So this is a clock circuit and because of the tick rate, I think it's every half second. So it's going to flip between one and minus one. We're then going to have another memory unit set to 0 0.5 and a math unit set to take the flip, this thing, and multiply it by half, basically. So we're getting minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. Over here, we've got a math unit. Uh, hang on. Ah, here we go. Yeah. So we've got a unary math unit, which is another one of these. It's going to take in the half output, this one, and it's going to run ceiling on it. And that rounds it up to the nearest integer. In this case, 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 rounds up to 0, 0 0.5 rounds up to 1. And then this U math unit is then <laughs> going to take the logic min max, this thing that indicates when either of the furnaces have anything in them, and it's going to take this, which is flipping between 0 and 1 continuously, and it's going to multiply them. So if there's nothing in that, it's always going to be a zero output. If there is something in that, it's going to start flipping between 0 and 1. When that happens, this batch writer is going to look at it. That's called trigger furnaces. It's going to look at it, and then it's going to keep on pushing the activate button over and over and over and over as long as this has something in it. So it's a complete circuit. I know it's, it may be a bit scary. Uh, if there is anything about this that you don't understand, feel free to get in touch with the comments and uh, hopefully we will be able to get this going. Um, I have been doing a lot of testing, so I've got lots of 1G coppers everywhere. But what tends to happen is when this is running, you'll see it distributing some copper to this second furnace before it manages to next trigger it. And if that happens inside half a second, I think it sometimes you end up with two um, because I was putting three one pieces of ore in there. So we're expecting two from one and one from the other. Um, that happens instead of getting one and then one and then it, it doing one rotation and then another one from, from whichever one it lands in. So it appears to be working. If any of you guys have a problem with this, if you think it's not working, please do let me know in the comments. More than happy to hear it. But otherwise, this is an automatic furnace setup. And I hope you can see that if I just connect these two and then send it back to our base or, you know, wherever, really, at this point, uh, it will output those metals back to a bin, just like we have up here on the ores. So I guess I could put a bin... Um, here, you know, I could take that wall out. The there's an oxygen tank back there, so I could do that. I'm not quite sure yet, but um, yeah, that will be doable. Maybe tomorrow's episode or something like that. If uh, I can get an episode out in time, I may do any more some more work on this circuit. If you know how to simplify it, do let me know as well. Um, <laughs> this is about as simple as I can get it to go between naught and one. Um, I'm assuming this would need naught and one to be able to do that. Uh, otherwise, we could cut out this and we could cut out this and it would flip between minus one and one and we could use that instead. But, you know, I'm, uh, some programming languages take minus one as essentially false. Not sure if this one does. So just in case, I've just got this bit and this bit that will change it into naught to one. Uh, sorry, that bit. Change it to naught to one. Okay, hope you enjoyed this episode. Is We've got an automatic furnace setup now. We can input it from upstairs. And it'll go into those furnaces and output wherever we want to. Tomorrow, I may well complete that and maybe some miscellaneous stuff before we get onto hydroponics and other systems. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And we'll see you next time.